today I'm going to review with you more about like the life of a missionary. I know you always hear stories from me and from others. I know last week we heard from the group who came from Greece serving the refugees and I want to talk more about what it means to be a missionary and more about what we're doing and maybe what we need to do here in the church um, and what you're already doing. So I'm going to talk more about this today and hopefully we can, we can gain something. First of all, I mean, of course, you know, one of the most important verses that, that we need to remember is the, the verse from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Everyone should take this verse personally. We as Christians are witnesses and sometimes we don't reach the ends of the earth but we have to start Jerusalem, Judea and all the ends of the earth. And I want us to take it more personally and even I want us to, to know that this is a true statement. Every church is a missionary church and every Christian is a missionary. So right away, this church is a missionary church because every church is a missionary church. We don't have to call it missionary church like we hear all over the country now. And every Christian is a missionary. So congratulations, you're a missionary. And I'm going to talk today about what's our responsibility as missionaries. And I just want you to plant this and reprogram this in our minds because sometimes we say, those who go to so-and-so place are the missionaries. That's true. There's global missionaries and there's missionaries. But every church is a missionary church and every Christian is a missionary. And what each church should do, and I want you to think about this church and I want you to think about your life, what each church should do is equip and build and train leaders for the mission. Okay, as you know and you've heard many thousands of times, our churches are not focused on a nationality. Our churches are focused on our community. And every church has that responsibility. So the term missionary gets a lot of different like interpretations. And the truth is, we're gonna go through the gospels and it's gonna be clear that it didn't just say only those, it says all, okay? So, first of all, inwardly, the local church, our church here, is a place where Christians worship God and get spiritually nurtured. And this is coming from St. Paul's writings, it's clear that there's a lot. Of, so it's good to come to church, to get built up, to be nurtured, to be strengthened, that's very important. Everyone should come for that. We come and receive Holy Communion, come to help the body, to encourage those. That's very important. That's the inward focus, okay? The outward focus is our local church, our church here. It's the center of evangelism and missionary outreach. By the way, that's clear from the book of Acts, which we saw in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Here's the problem. And I'm coming here today not to tell you what to do with the church. I'm coming here to encourage you as a missionary and as a missionary church to have a balance. Is it too much echo on this thing? I feel like I'm echoing a lot. Okay, if not, it's okay. Keep going. All right. You might hear it twice. Okay. So you're a missionary and it's a missionary church and there should be a balance between inward, taking care of those who are here, and outward evangelism. Every church has to have evangelism aspect. And you know, I was following the Greece mission trip and last week I know you had a presentation. It's really amazing to see that that's what was done in Greece, but that's what needs to be done in this church here. Like I said, every church is a missionary church. Every Christian is a missionary and there should be a balance between inward and outward. By the way, I'm not coming here to tell you new things. I always tell you that. When you see me here, I'm not trying to give you any new revelations. I'm just trying to remind you of the role you have in this church. And if you find yourself in this church not being a missionary and not being a missionary church, then that's something we can discuss. And I know you have a fiery priest in, in Abuna Paul, and he loves the mission, and I know Abuna Demetrius has the same kind of heart. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the four Gospels, and we're going to see the Great Commission, and we're going to take note that there's four different purposes 
for a missionary church. Does that make sense? We're going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to look at the Great Commission, and we're going to see how we, what we can learn from each one. Okay? So here, in Matthew, Jesus emphasizes the making of disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Amen. You know this. We heard it many times. We preach it. But here, the aspect of, of, of the Gospel of Matthew is disciples, discipleship. To be honest with you, when you think of evangelism, you don't think of discipleship. Isn't that true? Evangelism, you think about go out and tell people about Christ. That's very important. But here, it's making disciples. It's investing in a young generation. Back to what we said earlier. You are a what? You are a missionary. Good. You are a missionary. And as a missionary, your job is to invest in a young generation. You, to invest. If your parents, automatically, you have to do that. You have an opportunity to invest in your children. If you are parents, you automatically have discipleship. You already are going to fulfill the mission work. If you are an older person in, in, the, in the church today, you have a responsibility for the young ones, like the young ones here in the front and the young ones who are there. Our life, we can't just come to church to be built up for ourselves. We have to come to church to invest in a young generation and build them up. Remember, this church is a missionary church and you are missionaries. Now, to be honest with you, in Zambia, I made this mistake for many, many, many years. We would go to the market, we'd preach, come back, we would do a lot of evangelism effort, but we wouldn't spend time investing in the young generation. Now we have, this has changed, we have a lot of people we spend more time with, and this has changed, the, the culture has changed. The culture has to change, I don't know more about this church, but the culture has to be older investing in the younger. Anyways, we'll keep going. So that's from the Gospel of Matthew. What's the point of Matthew? We have to make what? Together. We have to make disciples, okay? I want you to remember because at the end we're going to look at all four. With the Gospel of Mark, it's a bit different. It's the Great Commission. It's about being dynamic, and I'm going to explain what that means. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Here we see miracles following our mission work. I wouldn't look for it, but it will be there. Don't look for it, but I want to tell you that the church that's dynamic in mission is like a lot of different miracles happen. I'll give you an example in Zambia. You know, in Zambia we have a hospital. Some of you who have come to Zambia know we have a hospital. There we do visit, visitation a lot, but we have a regular visitation every Wednesday after liturgy. We visit all the patients in the ward. We go around, we pray with them, we share the Bible with them, and if we can, we anoint them, those who are very sick. So one day we were going there, and we ran into a person, I think he, he, he's not a Christian, we'll say it that way, and we came in, he was shouting. We said, what's going on here? He was shouting, he was shouting. He was shouting at the nurses, telling the nurses, take down this cross of Jesus from my room. And the nurses are like, no, I can't take down the cross. This is a Christian hospital. You knew when you came here, this is a Christian hospital. We can't take down the cross. He was shouting at her, take it down now. And he was shouting, and we came in. There was a lot of shouting, and he saw me, and it was like, <laughs> it was like one of those scenes. So then we made a compromise. Okay, look, we won't take down the cross, but we'll turn your bed around, and we'll face the other way. And he agreed. So... At that point, we didn't want to preach to him or share the Bible with him or pray with him because he was shouting and he, he was in a bed. So we went outside 
and we started praying. We said, God, like this person needs to know you. He's rejecting you clearly, but he needs to know you. Anyways, to make a long story short, the next morning, I didn't go, but one of the deacons went, and he said his bed was turned back around towards the cross, and he was worshiping and saying Jesus' name, and then the deacon said, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And he said, no, I, overnight, like something came to me, and, and I want to worship. I want to worship this Jesus of yours. Tell me more. And that's how it began, like the journey of this great miracle um, of him like coming to Christ and coming to know God. And this kind of stuff happens every day. Maybe we see it or don't see it. But remember, mission work, number one, was there has to be discipleship. Number two, there ha it's going to be dynamic. Don't look for miracles or signs, but they will be there. There's another story I'll tell you quickly. I know I have a time crunch here, but there's another good story in Zambia is that we also have a cafeteria or a snack bar in between the wards and the church. So we have this lady... When any, anytime someone comes to get a drink or a snack, she starts to share the Bible with them, no matter what religion they are. She starts to share the Bible and pray with them. So anyways, she, one day I was in my office, and I didn't know, like I wasn't really like concentrating. And here comes a family, a Muslim family, coming into my office. And they said, pray for me. I'm like, what? And I said, maybe they're confused. This is like, because, you know, we look the same sometimes. But <laughs> I said, maybe there's some confusion. And they're like, maybe. So I didn't know if they knew that I was a priest. And, and I was like, you know, we worship Jesus. And so I started talking to them. And I started praying for them. And I had to make sure I mentioned, in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. And I wanted to say, like, Jesus' name to make sure they knew. But they wanted it. Apparently at the cafeteria... The, the lady who is good at evangelism, she, she really like spent time with them to talk to them about God and, and, and they started also coming and there was a nice little miracle there happening where they came and they started following God. So these are the kind of things that happen every day. But our church has to be a mission church. We have to be missionaries. Like imagine the person at the snack shop was more critical than the priest and that's how it should work. It should be all of us working together. And remember, in the Gospel of Mark, it's dynamic. Okay? So, anyways, there's lots of stories, but for the sake of time, we'll, we'll go on. And so let's go to the Gospel of Luke. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, we get the message of repentance. It says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. So it's very important that our messages have something to do with change and transformation. As we know, St. John the Baptist had that focus in, about repentance, and our Lord also. Look, I'm not saying go like St. John the Baptist and go to people and say, repent. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that <clears throat> when we talk to people, our prayers and our goal is for people to return to him. Like the story of the prodigal son. It's a return home. It's return to the Father. This has to be part of our mission. Like today, like I said, I'm going to tell you about mission that we should be doing. Okay? Mission should be discipleship. Mission should have something to do with miracles and, repent or and change, something dynamic. And mission has a lot to do with repentance. And to be honest with you, there's been so many times in Zambia that I would go house to house, share the Bible, and leave quickly almost like a routine. But then this, when I was preparing this, it convicted me to remind me that there's a point to why, to why we are Christians and why we are missionaries and what we should, like our goal with people. Our goal is for people to repent. And the problem is we see it in a very negative way, in a very tough way. But there is a goal that we want to see people changing the same way we are changing, the same way we want to see people change around us. Okay? Let's go to the Gospel of John. In John, we see that we must be called and sent by God. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. You know, so many times we hear you are called. But it's clear 
God is saying in the Gospel of John, we are called and sent for a mission. Even if you look at the book of Acts, it says who sent the disciples out or who sent the apostles? It says the Holy Spirit. It says it clearly. Read Acts chapter 13. The Holy Spirit sent them. That means God is the one asking us today in this church to have this mission focus, not just in Greece, not just in Africa, but here in our community, in our church. This is a mission church. You are a missionary. Let's begin this journey. Remember, we have to build and invest in disciples. Remember, we're going to see dynamic ministry. You know when I say it's dynamic, the miracles happen to people and happen to us. I can say so many miracles happen in my life since I've been doing mission. And remember, we want to keep things in balance between inward and outward focus. And don't forget the message of repentance. And don't forget that maybe, and you know you hear this all the time, maybe you have a special calling and you need to be sent to someone. Maybe to some people. But there is something for us. Now this gospel, let me ask you this then. Are these four gospels for me? And Abuna Paul and Abuna Demetrius? Or for us? It's for us. But sometimes we say, no, that's not for me. So whenever you want to know clearly what is your purpose and mission, you can go to the Great Commission and the Four Gospels. Now, what's the challenges we face? And I'm going to go through this part quickly. You know, you guys might understand this. What is leading our churches? Is it money? Is it priests? Is it people? No. No. It's God. God is leading the mission all over the world. So here's the problem. We have it mixed up a little bit. We have it that, by the way, when I'm speaking today, I'm not speaking about any church. I'm sharing experiences in the mission in Africa, in my personal experiences, that could help you or not help you. It's up to you. But I want to say one of the challenges we face, is God the one leading the mission, leading the church? And the answer is yes, if we let him. We need him to. Don't let, like, and that's why we need a group prayer for this. We need always to be prayerful, to understand how God can lead us. You know, that's why churches have vision. That's why mission, mission have vision, and we follow the vision towards a purpose. I'll give you like an example quickly, but like if David Habashi and Sani Saeed said every week in Light and Life, each person will get 10 five guys, five guys burgers. Every week, everyone gets 10. Everyone gets, that's the vision of Light and Life, right? So number one, everyone is going to, there's, there's going to be an increase in attendance. So it's saying if you want to try it, it's up to you. There's going to be an increase in attendance. And everyone is going to like be big like that. And everyone is going to be... So we're going to follow that vision. Whatever vision is, is, is set, we follow it and like we fall into place. So like, and all of our money is going to go where? We're going to be going to five guys, investing our money in that vision. And we're going to like maybe have like partnership with them. And, and so forth. My point is, money is not leading, people are not leading, it's God leading. If we have a right vision from God, the rest will come. And here's the vision. The Great Commission in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is the vision. The Bible clearly states that we are supposed to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. And we don't do that. We're supposed to be discipling. We're supposed to be like preaching repentance. We're supposed to be and so and so. All of those things are part of what God wants to show us as his vision. So let's be clear. What is the vision of light and life? What is the vision of St. Mark Church? And let God lead us to that and everything will follow. People will follow and, and also money will be invested in that. I don't want to stay too much on this one. This one is more of something that, that, that it's related to me more. So 
I don't want to stay on that too long. But let me go to the next one, which is very important. Remember to care for the missionaries. What do I mean? This is, you know, I want to tell you something, and don't be upset about this, but number one reason people stop doing mission is no one cares for the missionaries. Do you know that? No one asks, no one prays, no one visits, no one. Now what I'm saying is, I'm telling you from my personal view, but I'm also sharing with you, what if few of you came back from Greece and you're excited about mission, and the rest of you are like, oh, hmm, I've heard that before. No, you should be excited with them. Anyone who's doing anything from the Great Commission, anyone who's doing anything from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, encourage it, care for them, support them, invest money into it. But don't, and what I want to say to you is, your leaders in this church, care for them. They're the leading missionaries for you guys. Like for Father Paul and Father Demetrius, you should care for them. I'm not saying anyone's going to quit if you don't care for them. But there's a problem with not caring for leaders and missionaries. And I'm encouraging you, a mission church and being a missionary needs support, needs care, needs, you know, you guys set me off 10 years ago and some of you are very great at supporting and some of you are not. I belong to your church. We are one church. Zambia Church is your church. And if you go to Greece, care for them. If you do something here in the community, care for them. But my point is, one of the biggest challenges people face why they quit being a missionary is people are just, they're not supportive of it. So you support anyone going on short-term trips, long-term trips, doing mission here in this church, support it, encourage it. Don't look, oh, I've seen that before. No, don't do that. Encourage the people. Third thing is, the mission churches don't become mission churches. Let me explain what that means. You know, from personal experience, we have five churches in Zambia going on six right now, okay? When I got there, there was about two, and I made a big mistake in the mission, that we would plant churches, but those churches wouldn't be mission-focused. Imagine a mission church in Africa planting a church that wouldn't have anything to do with the Great Commission or Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's the mistake. Every church is a missionary church, and every church should be doing mission. So wherever, whatever is planted everywhere, it has to fulfill its purpose. You know, as we open more churches in the area, those churches should be what? Mission churches. Okay, I'm sure people are going to hate me after this talk, right? Okay. But anyways, you guys, I'll leave it tomorrow to Zambia. You guys will be free. But anyways, every church that's planted has to fulfill the Great Commission in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It has to. This one, STSA that was planted from this church, Zambia, whatever, all of it has to continue. Because I've made that mistake many times that when a church is planted, it loses that mission focus. Because they have headquarters, and we plant that church, we plant that church, we plant that church, we plant that church. We're the mission church, but they are not. That's wrong. This is one of the challenges we can face in a mission. Okay. So what, I'm going to give you practical now, what you can do, what you will do. Okay? There's three Ps, right? Presence is the first one. Let me explain what presence means. First of all, there was two weeks ago in the gospel, it was Luke chapter 9, verse 11. Let me read that to you. He received them, this is Jesus, he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. After he did that, he fed the 5,000. You got it? Let me say it again. You with me? He received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Then he fed them. The first P is presence. He received them. What I want to say to you is this. What is your role now, specifically? Because you know, when, when people preach, they tell you a lot of stuff, and then at the end you say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let me tell you what you're going to do, or what you need to do. It's up to you to choose. Is have a presence in your communities. Have a presence 
in your work, in your school. What is presence? Presence means smile. Can everyone smile really quickly for me? Can everyone smile? Let's see the biggest smile you have. I can't see because the lights are shining on me, but I'm looking down. Everyone smile. No, I can't come talk to you guys. Everyone smile. This side is better. Okay, okay, good. This side, I don't know what happened to this side. You have, what did you do over here? I don't shout up, shout up. <laughs> Stay away from me. You have to smile. What I mean is that you have to be friendly. You know, the biggest thing is when people want to, like, know more, they can't because you're not smiling. You're not friendly. The biggest thing is presence. We need to, to be, like, at work, smile at people, talk to people. I'm not saying do what people do, but I'm saying build relationships. Not build relationships to hurt you. Build relationships so you can, you can do work for God. You can do mission work. I'll give you a few stories really quickly. I was on the airplane coming here from Zambia a few weeks back. And Dahlia and Josiah and Mary Grace, they were on the, the three seats on one side. There wasn't four on this plane, so it was three. So I got stuck like in an, the next row, the next side. And next to me was this guy who wanted to, to talk. And, you know, and for me, I just wanted to put the headphones on and like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't know if you're like that on the plane. I just don't want to like, like sleep and just. So he started talking with me. And this guy was good. He was very friendly. And later I learned he was an evangelist. And he was trying to convert me because I looked like I needed to be converted. <laughs> so it's true. He tried to convert me. And, and he was good. He was so friendly. He had me engaged in conversation with him. And I never like to talk to anybody. I just like to focus on the airplane. Don't talk to me. And you know, when someone starts talking, you say, hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah, it's good. And then you finish and you... You're back on your thing. But this guy had me engaged in the conversation, and at the end, he told me that's what he does. And that's what he does for God. But because he was friendly and he smiled and he was welcoming and he was kind, it opened the door for him to say and do more things. Of course, later on, he learned I was a priest and he was excited about that, but you know, and it, it went from there. But that's presence. We need presence in our communities. You can do that now. You're like, no, no, you don't have to get a degree in theology to smile and be friendly and, and so forth. But you can connect with people. You know, sometimes we, we see our neighbor next to us, and you're like, and we, we may give them like the like that. When your guy's in the garage, you're in the garage, you may give them a wave. But it's a good chance to like start a conversation, be friendly with people, you know? I'm the biggest one to tell you, I don't like to do that, but <clears throat> it's important. If you want to be a missionary and you want to be a mission church, you have to have some presence in the community, either at school, at work, or wherever you go, you need to have presence. I'll tell you one more story about that. I was in Jacksonville, me and Dahlia are there in the beginning of our trip because her brother is from there, and we went out to eat and they were babysitting the kids and we got time to go to a restaurant and eat. At the end, we had dessert. And that's where the 10 pounds I told you about in the sermon are coming from. Anyways, we had dessert. And all of a sudden, the lady next to me, she started looking over at, at me and, like, at, at, and, and, and turning back. And looking over and saying, whoa, and coming back. And I'm like, what is she doing? I was thinking, about this, what's going on? And then she said, I love your dessert. I said, okay. And it's a true story. I'm not making up a story. And, and she said, oh, it's the best. And she started explaining the dessert and the history of the dessert and, and everything about dessert and how it was made. And I was like, I said, wow, this must be a good dessert. And, I, and Dahlia started talking to her while I was eating. So she, I said, like, you keep talking to her. <laughs> Let me just, and I, that's what happened. At the end, Dahlia, poor Dahlia didn't get any dessert. But anyways, 10 pounds, I'm telling you. I got 10 pounds here. So, <clears throat> but she was great. At the end, she started with dessert, but she, at the end, she was sharing which spiritual books she was reading and what touched her in her life. At the end, she said, I'm going to be praying for you, and we're going to be praying for her. And it was like, how did we go from dessert to praying for each other and sharing spiritual books? That's the presence. We need to have some presence in, 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 the, in the community. You guys really want to be a mission church? You want to be missionaries? Or you just want to be like, whatever, whoever comes to church, it's okay. Whoever comes. If they come, they come. If they don't come, they come. Whoever. No. Every church has to follow the Great Commission. 
every church has to follow Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So presence is very important. Number two, proclamation. Remember I said in the Gospel of Luke, he received them. What did he do next? He spoke to them about the kingdom of God. We can be welcoming and friendly, but we have to, to speak about the kingdom of God. Look, this is the one that's very hard. I can be friendly, but don't tell me to speak about God. We have to get there. It's so important that we drop seeds in people's lives around us. Maybe you're not going to get fruit the first day, but you have to drop kingdom seeds. Last story I'll tell you. I know, I'm tell I know you're tired of my stories. Last story I'll tell you about proclamation and telling people about the kingdom of God. Once again, I was on the plane. This was a few months ago, going to Greece to visit like the footsteps of St. Paul and to Mount Athos. And um, I was on the plane, and I was in seat 18A. I'll never forget the seat number. And another guy came to me and said, this is my seat, 18A. And I said, no, it's my, it's my seat. Look, it says 18A, that's my seat. He said, no, 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 it's my seat. So I said, wait a minute, let me, I'm a priest. <laughs> let me just let him have the seat before we get into a fight. So I gave him the seat. And so there was no arguing, and I said, okay, I don't know if I'm going to be on this plane or not, because the, the plane is full. Anyways, the flight attendant came and said, what's the problem? I said, we both have 18A, we both showed our tickets. And I turned to him jokingly and said, hey, maybe you can put me in business class. I don't know. And he looked at me and turned around and walked away. And I said, okay, maybe not. <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, he came back after a few minutes and says, come here. And I'm like, I don't know why he was shouting at me. So I, said, okay. so I came there, and he put me in business class. And business class in this airplane is like first class. So, you know, I got my, you know, pillow there and, and the lay down, and there's a, they give you a bag. It has, like, shampoo and shaving cream. Of course, I didn't need the shaving cream, but it was, a, it was nice. It was a nice thing. And, but at the end of the day, I was sitting there. I was enjoying business slash first class. And then all of a sudden... People next to me started shouting. They started whispering. Like, what's going on? What's going on? They said, shh. And I said, hey, what's, that? what's happening? They said, no, you're sitting next to the first president of Zambia, Kenneth Kaunda. I said, okay, it's great. And you know, you have a seat, you have the, you know, in those, those things that, so you can't see anybody next to you, which is nice. But, <laughs> so, but anyways, I said, wait a minute. I'm a missionary priest. The president is there. I don't know if he knows God or not, but I got to say something to him. I have to proclaim something to him. So in my proclamation speech, I said, can we take a picture together? And then I went over there. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. And, it, and I, I started, he took a picture, like his, his group there took a picture of us. And then I turned to him with sweating coming down, because this is the first president, one of the greatest presidents in Zambia's history, and there's a lot of good things about him. And I started to talk to him a little bit about God and what I'm doing. I'm a priest, and our church is Coptic Orthodox Church, and, and we're doing this kind of work, and, and I tell, you know, God be with you, and we're praying for you, Your Excellency. And I was trying to, like, plant some kingdom seeds in that moment. And I think that's how we have to be. Yes, we have to have smiley faces, and nice and kind and connect with people, but at the end we have to proclaim and we have to drop kingdom seeds. And I think that was something that I, I can probably do better of and we have to do better of. Let me go to the last P. So we have to do, to make a presence in our communities, we have to proclaim the kingdom of God and we have to plant kingdom seeds. And number three, we have to provide. Now, in the Gospel of Luke chapter nine, at the end, not at the beginning, at the end, they provided food for the people. And you know, it's not going to always be food. Like, to be honest with you, it's not just providing for poor people. It's providing the needs for everybody. Like, all of us have needs here. And, you know, like, if you can drive someone to the airport or you can do a nice gesture and there's some kind of action that needs to be done. Like, you know, sometimes we forget it's not just going to feed the homeless, you know. That's not what a mission church does only. That's what people think we do in Africa only. That's part of it. But there's more to the story, you know. So, yes, we have to have a presence in our communities we have to proclaim that there's definitely Christ has to be in your life. 
And we have to provide the needs of the people. It may come in physical things. It may be emotional support. I don't know. So these are the three Ps that we can do for people. So to kind of recap for all of us, we are a mission church. And you are missionaries. I think you maybe don't believe it. And maybe you kind of believe it. But you need to start believing it. And remember, in the Gospel of Matthew... We have a role of discipleship. In the Gospel of Mark, we're going to see dynamic church, a dynamic church. And things are going to happen that are miraculous. In the Gospel of Luke, don't forget, in our sharing, repentance has to be preached. And I'm still working on that. And remember, in the Gospel of John, we're called and sent by God. Let's go to the conclusion a quote from St. John Chrysostom, if a Christian is unable to serve others and mission to others, then it is like the sun that is unable to give light. It becomes useless. Anyways, I don't want us to be useless. I don't want our church to be useless. I want our church to be a mission church. I want our church to give light. I don't want to say we're just coming to attend. No. We're coming to encourage also others. Like what I would love to see one day, and this is just my personal opinion, is that, that we start to use this light in life more to reach out to the community, to let everyone in the community here come to this place. And we don't need to sell five or bring five guys burgers here, even though it would be nice, but it would, you don't need to do that. It just needs a smiley face, an encouragement, a connecting with people. Let me go back to the three Ps real quick. If we can go back one slide... There we go. Presence, proclamation, and provide. If we can do that even, then we're not going to be useless church. So I'm praying for all of you. I think that this church is still one of the best churches in the world. And this church has a lot of amazing people. I know you guys very well, most of you, and this is an amazing church. I don't want you to lose that missionary spirit Praying for you. You are a missionary. This church is a missionary church. Praying for you. Pray for me and glory be to God forever.